Welcome to the chapter on phenobarbital dosing and drug concentration predictions. Phenobarbital is an old drug that has been used for many years as an anticonvulsant, but does have other uses as well. Therapeutic monitoring occurs most commonly in the setting of use as an anticonvulsant. Phenobarbital is rarely used for the treatment of seizures in adults. When it is used for treatment of seizures, the use is most often seen in very young patients. In this video, we will determine loading and maintenance doses to produce desired concentrations based on population pharmacokinetic parameters. We will also examine dosage adjustments based on the results of measured concentrations. I hope you enjoy the video. All right, let's begin with a patient case. We have a one-week-old female patient who weighs three kilograms and she is to be given phenobarbital for seizures. To begin, we want to determine a loading and maintenance dose, and to do so, we need to estimate the patient's volume of distribution and clearance. The phenobarbital population average volume in a one week old is 0.96 liters per kilo. Because of that, and because our patient weighs 3 kilograms, the volume is 0.96 times 3, or 2.88 liters. Now let's get clearance. The population average clearance in a week, one week old for phenobarbital is 0.0047 liters per hour per kilogram. Since our patient is 3 kilograms, the final clearance is 0.0141 liters per hour. To continue our case, let's now determine an IV bolus loading dose for a post-load concentration of 25 milligrams per liter. To solve for the concentration at any time t after a single IV bolus dose, we use the following formula, C equals S dose over V times E to the minus KT. You'll notice that bioavailability fraction F isn't in the formula because we know that's 1 for IV. So what we want to do is get to a concentration of 25 milligrams per liter at C0 after the bolus dose. C0 equals S times dose divided by volume of distribution and that leads to our C0 here immediately after the IV dose. We assume that the uh, phenobarbital follows single compartment distribution and therefore uh, C0 would occur fairly shortly after the dose. Because S dose over V is in this equation and it equals C0, we can also convert the equation to C equals C0 times E to the minus KT. Now let's look at this part of the equation, S dose over V. Remember that that equals C0, for that stands for this portion of the curve. If we want to go down the concentration time curve, what we use is E to the minus KT. So E to the minus KT is the fraction remaining after some time T of whatever place you start from, like C0 in this case. Now let's solve for the IV bolus loading dose. Phenobarbital sodium, which we use for IV, has a salt fraction of 0.9. That means 90% of any dose is the phenobarbital part and 10% is the sodium portion. C0 equals S dose times S dose divided by volume of distribution, and we can rearrange the equation to solve for dose, plug in the values, C0 desired is 25 milligrams per liter, the volume of distribution from the population values is 2.88 liters, and the S value is 0 0.9. When we do those calculations, it tells us to use a dose of 80 milligrams to produce a desired concentration of 25 milligrams per liter, based on the population volume of distribution of 2.88 
leaders. Now let's continue the case and solve for a maintenance dose. We'll determine an oral maintenance dose of phenobarbital elixir that'll be given every 12 hours and our desired average steady state concentration is also 25 milligrams per liter. So let's look at it pictorially. First, here's the equation. CSS average is equal to SF dose divided by clearance and tau. This is what a concentration time curve might look like. And what we want is CSS average, which occurs roughly halfway between the peak and the trough, or about halfway through the dosing interval. So let's solve for the dose to produce that average concentration of 25 milligrams per liter at steady state for a drug given every 12 hours. Here's the equation rearranged to solve for dose. And again, this is what it would look like pictorially with a desired concentration of 25 milligrams per liter. Now let's do the calculations. Phenobarbital elixir has an S of 1, but the bioavailability fraction is about 0.9, or 90% is absorbed into the systemic circulation. Our equation for dose is as follows. Let's plug in our numbers. Again, we have a desired CSS average of 25 milligrams per liter. Our clearance from the population was 0.0141 liters per hour. Our dosing interval is 12 hours. S is 1, and the bioavailability fraction is 0.9. After we plug in the numbers and do the calculations, the dose predicted is 4.7 milligrams every 12 hours. So let's continue on with our case. We gave the IV bolus dose of 80 milligrams, and a postload concentration was measured and reported as 22 milligrams per liter. Since we were anticipating 25 milligrams per liter based on the population values, it appears that our patient's volume of distribution isn't exactly at the population value and is actually larger than the population. So what we want to do now is calculate the patient's actual volume of distribution. Remember the predicted concentration was 25 milligrams per liter and the measured concentration 22 milligrams per liter. So there's the C0 we thought was going to occur after the dose. The concentration drops after the dose. And there's the concentration that was actually measured after the dose. To determine the volume of distribution after the IV bolus loading dose, we use the formulas as follows. C0 equals S dose divided by V. And what we want to do is isolate volume and change the equation so that V equals S dose divided by C0. S was 0.9, the dose was 80, and the concentration measured at C0, 22 milligrams per liter, which gives us a volume of distribution of 3.27 liters per kilo, or relative to body weight, 1.09 liters per kilogram. If you'll remember, the population value was 0.96 liters per kilo. Again, we expected that, the pop, that this patient's volume of distribution was larger than the volume based on achieving a lower concentration after the dose. We can also solve this by ratio, where the V actual equals the V population times the C predicted over C measured. The V actual 2.8 is equal to 2.88 liters, the population value, times 25 over 22. If you can't remember whether to put 22 over 25, start by thinking about what happened after you gave the dose. 
if you give a dose and the predicted value is 25 and the actual value is 22, you know the volume of distribution actual has to be larger. So if you use 22 on top and 25 on the bottom, you'd end up with a smaller volume and that wouldn't be appropriate. So the V actual is 3.27 liters. And again, if you divide that by three kilos, you'd end up with 1.09 liters per kilogram. All right, let's continue the case. The baby is still having seizure activity, so you wish to raise her concentration to 30 milligrams per liter from the 22 milligrams per liter that was measured. Assuming essentially no elimination occurred since the concentration measurement, what I'd now like to do is determine an additional IV loading dose to increase the concentration to 30 milligrams per liter. Since the half-life of phenobarbital can be anywhere from four to five days in babies, it's quite likely that there would be very little elimination over a several hour time period. So it's appropriate to assume no elimination. So let's consider the additional IV bolus loading dose. Because we're going to use IV, it's phenobarb sodium and S equals 0 0.9. We go back and use our equation, C change equals S dose over V. Now remember before I had it as C zero, but I like to use C change because we're not starting at zero and going up. We rearrange the equation to solve for dose. And the dose equals the C change, which is 30 minus 22, because we already had 22 on board times the 3.27 liters and divided by S. And that tells us to use an additional dose of 29.1 milligrams. We can also do this by ratio as well. In this case, the, the dose equals the dose that we administered previously times the concentration change desired divided by the concentration that was produced by the administered dose. So we gave 80 milligrams. It led to a concentration of 22 milligrams per liter, and we want to add on 8 more milligrams per liter. So again, the dose is 29.1 milligrams. One of the types of errors that are frequently done by students is going back and using the original population volume of distribution in this portion of the formula. The problem with that is, is the patient has now given us information that we can use because we gave them a dose and we determined a concentration from that dose. We now have feedback about what the patient's actual volume of distribution is. If you remember, the population value was 2.88 liters. So if we had used that, we would have end up, ended up using a smaller additional dose. The desired concentration is now 30 milligrams per liter, but we administered, uh, we determined a maintenance dose for 25 milligrams per liter. So what maintenance dose should we use for a CSS average of, of 30 milligrams per liter? Because we don't want to continue with the maintenance dose that would have been considered appropriate for a 25 milligram per liter CSS average. Unfortunately, we do understand that the patient's volume of distribution is larger, so they might actually have a larger clearance, but it is unknown until we actually give a maintenance dose and measure a steady state concentration. So let's see what that looks like. Here's the formula to determine the dose. The concentration desired is 30 milligrams per liter. Previously, we had 25 milligrams per liter there. The clearance is still the population clearance because we have no feedback from the patient on whether their clearance is different, other than that we know the volume is larger. But it could be that K is smaller, balancing these out so that the clearance is still the same. That gives us a dose of 5.6 milligrams every 12 hours. We can also do this one by ratio. 
and this one is the dose nu is equal to the current dose times the av CSS average desired by the CSS average current. So the dose that we had determined for 25 milligrams per liter was 4.7 milligrams every 12 hours. The new concentration we want is 30. The one that we were considering would be produced by 4.7 was 25. And when we solve that again, it's also 5.6 milligrams every 12 hours. Now let's look at what that might be described pictorially. So here we have the case of a dose being given every 12 hours and it produced a concentration of 25. But then we up the dose and end up with an average steady state concentration of 30 milligrams per liter.